Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna give a broad overview of what dynamics is and what you can expect to study this semester. Now, in a, a general sense, dynamics is the study of objects in motion. So for example, I have a eraser. I could take this eraser and throw it across the room. Um, what's gonna happen? Well, first I'm gonna have to go get it, uh, but as it goes through the air, this thing is going to spin and it's going to rotate and it's gonna have some kind of tumble to it depending on how I threw it. And maybe it hits the wall or a table or the floor and it bounces off. And when it does, it has some new trajectory. Dynamics is concerned with the math behind how this object is going to move and why it moves. And we're, we're of course going to uh, discuss things like, um, like forces and energy and conservation laws. That all goes along with it as well. Now, this field of dynamics it really comes from the work of Newton. So Newton, Isaac Newton, he was a British guy who worked at Cambridge. Uh, in 1687, Isaac Newton wrote a book, The Principia Mathematica, Prin... Principia, there we go. Uh, Principia Mathematica Philosophe Naturalis. Um, people usually just call it the Principia. The original point of his book was to address Kepler's laws of motion. Kepler made the claim that uh, heavenly bodies, planets, when they rotated about the sun, they did so in elliptical orbits, which is correct. Uh, Kepler made these claims, but he didn't have any math to back them up. So Isaac Newton originally wrote this book to simply address that, the elliptical motion of planets. Now, in so doing, in order to answer those questions, uh, he also invented calculus uh, at about the rate that you learn it in college. He, he created this new math in order to solve these problems, which is pretty incredible. Um, it's difficult to understate the importance of this work and just how much effect it had, uh, not just on the modern world, but at the time as well. It revolutionized fields of uh, astronomy, mathematics. Uh, it, it created this whole branch of classical mechanics, etc. cetera. Um, and that work, uh, it, it took about 50 years for anyone to come along and to significantly add anything to Newton's work. And when this man did, his name was, uh, his name was Euler, he was Swiss. Um, it's not pronounced Euler, it's Euler. So Euler comes along uh, and he makes his contributions to Newton's work. And uh, today, when we look at it, we call them the Newton-Euler equation. So when you see that Newton-Euler, uh, that's who, these two guys that we're talking about. If you go back and you look at Newton's Principia, uh, it doesn't look like, like modern-day calculus. It doesn't look like modern-day mechanics. Um, he, he wrote all of these series of claims. It was uh, a couple hundred proofs that he did, uh, geometric proofs, all this fun stuff. And over time, over the centuries, we have uh, boiled it down to modern day mechanics. It became uh, vector calculus. And of course, from this, we get Newton's three laws of motion. So uh, let's, uh, let's go through those three laws. Newton's first law, I'm not going to write them out, the, uh, the, the full declarations. You can, you can read them in the book or honestly just Google them. Uh, but Newton's first law is the definition of uh, inertia and equilibrium. So what do we mean, definition of inertia and equilibrium? The claim is that if you have an object and that object is uh, at equilibrium, uh, meaning uh, there are no forces acting on this object. So here's an object and of course I'm holding it in my hand, but just imagine there were no forces acting on this object, then this object is going to continue doing whatever it's doing forever, all right? If it is standing still, if I set it on the on this surface, it's going to continue sitting here on this surface. If it were in motion, imagine this were in deep space, uh, no gravity, no friction, nothing is acting on it, and it's just translating through space. It is going to continue translating. If this object is rotating in place, it's going to continue to rotate. If it is translating and rotating, it's going to continue translating and rotating. Now, that might be very simple for an object like this, but if it's a uh, connected system, if it's a multi-body system, 
what we think of as equilibrium might not be so simple. And we will look at, um, we're going to look at some objects that are uh, just one object, but they have maybe not a symmetric geometry. Maybe they have a, a strange geometry and a, an abnormal distribution of mass. We will look at what equilibrium is for one of those objects later. Uh, number two. So Newton's second law, um, you might think you know what it is. You might have encountered it in uh, a high school physics class or something. So I'm going to write down the high school physics version of it, which is F equals MA. <clears throat> now, uh, Newton's second law is not F equals MA. The formal definition of Newton's second law is that the differential change in linear momentum is equal to the sum of forces on the object. So where does, uh, where does linear momentum come into this problem? Well, uh, if you look at the syllabus, we're going to get to uh, topics of momentum in a few weeks. But uh, in most cases, many cases, simple cases, the formal declaration of Newton's second law does simplify down to F equals MA. Of course, when we do it, we're going to be working with, uh, we're going to be doing everything in vector space. Uh, and we are, in a couple of weeks, going to talk about the more uh, complicated form, right? The original form and the implications of it. Uh, we are going to do uh, just a, a little discussion on rockets. <clears throat> and of course, a, a key figure in rockets is that they burn fuel, they burn propellant. So uh, this equation, we don't see anything about what happens to changing mass. So if you have a system in which the mass is changing, uh, or more correctly, it's being ejected. If you have a system where you were uh, ejecting mass, or maybe you're even bringing mass in, it's called ablation, um, then there, there's extra terms in these equations. Uh, and they're not as straightforward or as simple as you think they are. So uh, we will eventually go back to the original form of Newton's second law. And I'm going to come back to this one in just a moment. Let's go ahead and, and talk about... Newton's third law. Uh, Newton's third law, I'm just going to say uh, action, reaction. And of course, if you have taken, um, if you uh, think back to your statics class, if you've done free body diagrams, we know that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. W what does that really mean in practice? Well, if I push against my wall, then the wall is actually pushing back on me. If I take my eraser and I place it on this surface, what keeps this eraser from just falling through this, this surface? What keeps my whiteboard from falling through the wall or falling through the surface? Well, the, uh, this is actually the top of the cat tower. Uh, the cat tower is pushing back on the whiteboard and the wall is pushing back on the whiteboard to keep it in place. So we are going to rely on on Newton's third law heavily when we get to our free body diagram uh, portion of the class. Um, we're going to study forces and moments um, after, after exam two. Okay, uh, what we need to do is we actually need to dig into Newton's second law for just a moment because this one equation is actually going to set the pace uh, for really the whole semester. Starting with F equals MA. Remember, it's not actually F equals MA. This is Newton's second law. The sum of forces uh, is equal to ddt of k. Now, k is linear momentum. We're going to dig into the concepts of momentum in a few weeks, so don't sweat it too much right now. Um, this was Newton's equation. And then recall, I said that Euler came back a couple decades later, and he added something to Newton's work. Now, Newton's equations, he actually dealt with particles, point masses, is what he did. He said, uh, here's a planet, and of course this planet has some kind of uh, geometry and a dis uh, distributed mass throughout it. Newton took this planet and he condensed it down to a single point and said, okay, here now is Earth. Earth is just a little dot. And this equation, Newton's second law, is for point masses. It was for particles. So uh, kind of like if you took the Earth down to its center, center of mass, and then we write some equation for the motion of the center of mass. This, of course, leaves open the, the door to, well, what about objects with geometry? What if we're not dealing with point masses? 
my eraser clearly has some kind of geometry to it. And it, uh, because it has geometry, it can rotate, right? And that was the, that was the big uh, accomplishment of Euler was he added equations that accounted for the rotation of objects. So we are, uh, we are going to handle both of these this semester. We're going to deal with translation and we're going to deal with rotation. Now, uh, how do we do that? Well, uh, these are the key equations for this semester. If you can solve these equations, you can answer questions about time. And that's, that's ultimately the goal in dynamics. Suppose that um, you are launching a rocket. So here's our rocket. And right now it's on the launch pad and we're going to fire the booster. Those boosters are gonna generate thrust on this object, on this rocket. And that thrust, those forces are going to generate some acceleration and it's going to take off and off and off and up it goes. If you have some information about this rocket at time zero, if you know where it is and how fast it's going, in this case, there it is, and it's not going anywhere, uh, and we're able to solve for these forces, we can actually find the entire time history of the motion of that object. I can tell you at 30 seconds where it is and how fast it's going. At a minute, 30 seconds, how fast is it? Uh, where, where is it and how fast it's going? So that's ultimately the goal. We want to be able to say, uh, after 10 seconds, the block, the sliding block is going this fast. After two minutes, the rotating gear is rotating at this speed, something like that. So in order to do that, we need to be able to answer these, uh, or build these equations to answer those questions. So uh, looking up here at F equals MA, again, this is, the, uh, this is the simplified form of it that we're gonna be working with most of the time. In F equals MA, there's clearly three parts. We have the forces, we have the mass, we have the acceleration. Now, the easiest of these, you might think, is the mass. Well, okay, uh, here's an object, and this object has mass, right? But remember, we're not doing just Newton's law, we're doing Euler's law as well. And the rotational analog, of this equation, it's no longer mass that you deal with, it is the distribution of mass. For example, we could have a solid sphere and we could have a hollow sphere and these spheres could have the, uh, the same volume and the same mass. They could be made of different materials. We could say aluminum and we could say iron. Iron, of course, is heavier, uh, more dense than aluminum, so we hollow this thing out and perfectly these things have the same masses. These two spheres will behave exactly the same according to Newton's second law, which again is just translation, but they will rotate differently because the distribution of mass in these two objects is different. So uh, we have to spend some time talking about mass and inertia. Inertia is the distribution of mass. So that's one part of the class. Another part of the class is dealing with A, acceleration. Uh, acceleration is the uh, derivative of velocity. Velocity is the derivative of position. What that means is if we want to be able to characterize the acceleration of some object, the first thing we have to do is characterize the position of that object. If we want to talk about its orientation, okay, we need to keep track of that as well. Uh, so the first part of the class, if you look at the syllabus, uh, the first several weeks is talking really just about A. And this A right here, uh, sometimes you'll hear this term kinematics. Kinematics is the study of the motion of a system of a, or of a body uh, without worrying about the forces. All we're doing is we're just discussing the motion, how it moves. So we have to spend several weeks talking about the kinematics, and we're going to slowly build up to it. So that's exam one. Exam two is going to be on uh, mass and inertia. And that's where we're going to bring in these topics of momentum. And we're also going to talk about uh, energy at that point as well. Next, uh, once we clear the acceleration and uh, momentum, then we're going to do uh, a week or two on forces and moments. We're going to hammer home free body diagrams. You have to be able to do it. If you're able to do all three of these parts, you take those parts, you can bring them together. Uh, and now we can construct the Newton-Euler equations. So again, look at the syllabus. There is, um, there's a couple of weeks where we're going to 
take all of this and we're going to combine it and then we're going to start working problems based off of uh, what we call once you have this uh, this is called the equation of motion and depending on the system it might be equations equations of motion you could have several equations uh, that govern the motion of the system so uh, that is ultimately the goal of undergraduate dynamics I give you a system, I give you a problem, this is what's gonna happen on the final, I give you a problem, and I say I need the equations of motion for this problem. And you have to understand the entire process of being able to define acceleration, defining mass and inertia terms, and being able to find the forces and moments. If you're able to do that, you're gonna do just fine in this class, and honestly, you're gonna do just fine in engineering. Uh, this math that we're doing right now, it is the fundamental math behind rocket science, behind automobile design, behind control theory, um, anything dealing with things that move. You need to be good at dynamics. So that is, uh, that is going to be the focus of this class. Uh, and we're gonna do a, a handful of other fun things along the way. Like I said, there's gonna be energy discussions. Um, there will also be impulse and momentum discussions, which is really uh, one, uh, contact impact um, objects colliding and bouncing off each other uh, but also um, imagine that you had uh, like a fireman holding a fire hose there's a there's a lot of pressure on the water in that line and it comes out at a very high velocity and if you are holding that fire hose you feel it it is pushing back on you so we'll talk a little bit about how you find that uh, that thrust imparted from a, um, a fluid okay uh, so that's the plan for the semester, where we're going to start. The next, uh, the next couple of videos are really going to focus on this acceleration, and we're going to take it nice and slow. Uh, next video is just on position and orientation. See you then.